what's the connection between bullying and unhealthy eating? Well, for me, bullying led me to turn to food for comfort, and bad habits followed. You see, I was collecting drops of negativity in my cup of life in the form of unkind comments and actions. Soon I had a cup full of this poison, and it was very bitter tasting. Consuming it, internalizing it, prevented me from reaching my goals, including keeping fit. And some people may say, oh, bullying, that's just in the schools. It doesn't concern me. Well, guess what? We can be bullied at any age. We can receive it from immediate family, in-laws, friends, coworkers, management, even the pushy consumer in a department store. Bullying consists of donors who add drops of negativity to your cup of life in the form of unkind comments and or actions. Soon you have a cup full of this toxin and it prevents you from doing things as you could or as you should. I'm going to show you how bullying took a piece of my life away, but how I was able to get it back. I was a child who was not accepted, not in the neighborhood, not in the school, because I was overweight. Children would not allow me to play games. They would shoo me away, and I would watch them have fun from afar. I could not join them at the lunch table. If I approached, one of them would say, you can't sit with us fatness. So I would go and find an empty classroom. And I didn't want to get caught by a teacher and be turned out. So I would hide in the corner of the classroom and I would eat my lunch alone and in the dark. I was called every fat name you could think of. I, I was called a loser. I was called ugly. There was no mercy on my soul, not even after my dad died. I was in 11th grade and he died of a massive heart attack. My family, we, we were so devastated. We didn't see this coming. I was out for days mourning my dad's death. But when I came back to school, I was not left alone, not even for a day. In fact, they said that my dad died because of me. They said that he could no longer stand looking at my fat, ugly self and his heart gave out, and that is why he died. And by then, my heart was crushed, and my cup was spilling over with negativity. And as a result, I had self-hate. I would tell myself, you're no good, you're a loser, I hate you. And I had lack of drive, I didn't want to try anything. And I had low self-esteem, I would walk, looking down at the ground, totally ashamed to be me and bad habits followed as well. The turning point came when I was in 12th grade and I liked this up and coming celebrity. And I would cut out pictures and magazines and newspapers and I would paste them on my book and I'd make homemade buttons with his name on it. And the children knew who I liked and they used that as ammunition against me. One boy wanted to humiliate me in front of the entire class so he approached me and he said, you know that guy you like? Well, he sucks and so do you. He must be a loser if you like him. Now something inside me brewed because not only is he making fun of me, he's making fun of someone I like. And my mom told me in the past, don't fight back. They'll just ignore them, don't make waves, they'll leave you alone over time. But they never did. So I mustered up enough courage, and I looked at him, and I said, I know who you like, because I see the pictures all over your locker. But I don't make fun of you, because you're entitled to your opinion. Well, I am a person, too, and I have feelings, and I deserve respect. Now, I like this guy, and if you can't accept it, why don't you do us all a favor and just shut your mouth? And I looked around, waiting for laughter, because they always laughed at me. But instead, I received applause. And I realized that when I stick up for myself, I have a good chance of being left alone. That boy never bothered me again. But also, 
When I did not accept his drops of negativity, I became more positive and therefore more self-empowered. So I decided I'm going to clean out my cup and I'm going to get rid of that negativity drop by drop. And I did this in several ways. And to name a couple, I read self-help books on how to build a positive spirit. I also challenged myself to speak out in public because I was very, very shy. But it didn't happen overnight. It took time. I feel we can all step out of the status quo and change. And this is how we do it. First, we have to drop the negativity from others. Either speak up and speak out, or have someone do it for you. Now, we're all of different ages, different situations. But depending, either have someone handle it, or you speak out yourself. And don't worry about making waves or getting someone angry. They're obviously not on your side. And they cross the line. They deserve to face the consequences. Also, drop the negativity from within yourself. A lot of us tell ourselves pretty horrible things. We'll say something like, oh, I can't do anything right. Oh, I'm such a loser. Even in my tutoring business, when certain students make mistakes, they'll say, oh, I'm so stupid. And of course, I challenge them on that. But definitely, get rid of the negative thoughts from your life. It, it holds you back more than you know. Also, drop the words you tell yourself in the form of excuses. Excuses are simply statements of a problem and why you will not come to a solution. For instance, I'm overweight, I need to lose weight, but I don't have time. Always come up with a solution to your problems. Do not accept the status quo. So for me, bullying led to negativity, which led to unhealthy eating. Once I got in the right mindset, it was time to tackle a healthy lifestyle. This was me. I weighed 272 pounds. And I got this way several ways. One, of course, my bad eating habits. But also, I was a scientist in corporate. I used to travel, and I'd eat out three meals a day. The choices were not wise. Also, I would eat out in a restaurant or in a cafeteria and, of course, made terrible choices. The birth of my son put on pounds, and then finally this, a car accident. A man ran through the stop sign, hit my car, and so hard he hit it, he spun 180 degrees and hit me again. I had a totaled car and two knee surgeries. I had to walk with a cane. So with the increase of weight, came the increase of my problems. First, I couldn't find my size in the store. I had to special order clothes, and the choices were paltry. I also was very limited in my activities. I would sit on the bench, and I would tell my family, here, you go on ahead. Um, I'll just sit here, because walking was a chore. And I certainly couldn't take a nice walk on the beach. And there were also a lot of weight restrictions, especially on amusement park rides. Sometimes it was a 250-pound weight restriction, and I was 272. So I knew this was not the life that I wanted to lead. I wasn't free. I couldn't do a lot of things. So I made a list of healthy eating obstacles, and I paired them with solutions. And the result was this, my book, Goodbye Fatness, Hello Gorgeous. Now, fatness is not a degrading term for anyone. Actually, it was the name a lot of students called me. So it's like saying goodbye to that person and hello to a new improved person inside and out. And people noticed the results. I lost 125 pounds in three and a half years. And I've maintained, thank you. And here's something even more special I've maintained and haven't gained for over four years now. So there you go. <laughs> so, so people wanted my tips. I gave them the tips, and they said, you know what? You should write a book. And so I did, and thus the book. So I pulled some of these tips for you. So um, we, I'm happy to share them with you today.
First, drop the excuses. We're going to tackle two that I hear most often. One, I do not have time. And second, fat runs in my family. I can't lose weight. So la let's tackle the first. I do not have time. Well, guess what? Make time. You're worth it. Work it in in the morning or before you go to bed, but carve out that time for you. Also, we spend a lot of time waiting in life, don't we? Why don't we just use that time to be productive and exercise? We're waiting at the post office or on, on line at the bank or um, at a sporting event or while we're on the phone with customer service and so on, or while we're on line in, the, in line at the department store or in line at the supermarket, especially when that one person has 50 items or more in the 10 items or less lane. So we're always waiting. So why don't we do some exercises? Do crunches, depending on what you're doing. Do heel lifts, like this. Do toe lifts, but not in heels, OK? Uh, but do something. And also, park the car far. A lot of people park close to a shopping center. So it decreases your steps and increases your st uh, stress, actually, because you have car doors and shopping carts hitting your car. You can't back out because there's so much traffic. But when you park far, it's less congestion. You get more steps, increase in steps, decrease in stress. Now let's tackle the fat runs in my family. I hear, oh, my mom was overweight, my uncle was overweight, I'm going to be overweight. Or, and there's no way I can lose the weight. I even hear it with tutoring, I'll hear, my son doesn't have the math gene, so he is not going to do well. See? Ridiculous. <laughs> do not let people's past determine your future. You can carve out your own path. Now, once we got in the right mindset, we're all in the right mindset, let us tackle the eating portion. See a doctor for a healthy eating plan because the amount of calories and fat you need differ from what I need. And some people have heart disease and diabetes, so they need a more tailored plan. So definitely do that. And then do me a favor and um, get rid of the putrid diet food, okay? Because most of it is just chemical concoctions. It's not healthy. It's not satisfying. One time I bought a piece of diet cheese. Mm-hmm and it had the look and texture of wax. Now, the scientist in me wanted to light it to see if it had the properties of a candle. <laughs> it tasted as bad as it looked. It ended up in the garbage. So budget real food into your diet, OK? And then also, slow down your eating, because when you eat fast, you eat more. I use a shrimp fork, teaspoon, sometimes a baby spoon. Measure and gradually reduce. A friend of mine came to me one day. He says, you know, I always eat this heaping bowl of cereal. How can I cut back my portion? And I said, well, don't go from three cups to a half a cup, because when you make drastic cuts in your portions, you're going to fail. So I said, measure two cups of cereal. Then after a time, measure a cup and three quarters, and then a cup and a half. And do measure, because a lot of us get a little macho and we go, oh, I know what a cup size looks like, I, I, just by looking at it. But we end up being very inaccurate, and we end up taking more, especially when we are hungry. So do get out the measuring cups, spoons, and the food scale. OK, so now I have a cool tip for you. Combine a lot of good with a little bit of bad. Now, this is a peanut butter filled cupcake, and it's very high in calories and fat, so I only have half, but it looks so lonely there on that plate. It really does. <laughs> but I know how to get a good dessert with fewer calories and fat, so I microwave it for 10 seconds or so until the icing becomes a fondue. And then I combine it with berries, and now we have a hot lava cake, and we have a fondue to dip our berries in. I also do that with pizza. I will cook up onions, mushrooms, and spinach, and I will add it to the slice. So now I only have the need for one slice. And this is a big improvement because the old me used to have five slices in one sitting. So now that we have the right mindset, 
now that we have the right mindset and we have the right eating plan, let's take a look at the benefits. For me personally, I am helping others. This is like tutoring on a wider scale. I've been on the internet, I've been in magazines and newspapers, and I love spreading my message. For us overall, the universal benefit is we could do more. I know I can participate in more activities. I no longer need the bench. We can also branch out and do different activities. I recently took up kayaking. I absolutely love it. We can have fashion fun. The old me used to be afraid to wear certain styles of clothes. And now I can wear fitted clothes, jeans, belts, tank tops, dresses, and I no longer have to wear this shirt. This used to be my shirt. And it is such a thrill to this day, and I'm still grateful to this day, that I am able to go into a store and find my size. And we, have, we can have confidence overall. Now, I love quotes. I love reading them. I love creating them. And I have one that I would like to share with you that I created. Fill your cup to the brim with the positive. Do not even allow for one drop of negativity. And by the way, they were wrong. I am not a loser. The only thing I am a loser in is weight, weight loss. And I've had an exciting life. I got to model on a major television show. And I've had a lot of roles in my life. I was a scientist. I'm a mom. I'm a tutor. I'm a motivator. And I love motivating because to me, I feel my life is more worthy building lives up compared to those who tear lives down. So I'm doing fine, and so is my childhood idol. You know the one. He was called a loser because I liked him. Well, that up-and-coming celebrity is now a household name. And as far as I can see, Johnny Depp is a success, and he is doing just fine. <laughs> Be strong and persevere. Thank you.